Hi, I'm Jenny Shampo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and we're joined today by Joseph Stewart. We're so glad to have you. Thanks. Thanks for, so much for the invitation. Joseph Stewart is a scholar of African American history, particularly of the relationship between race, masculinity, civil rights, and religion in 20th century black freedom movements. He received his PhD in history from the University of Utah and an MA in Religious Studies from University of Virginia. And he's the co-editor of the Mormon Studies Review. He's also the former host of the Maxwell Institute podcast. So this is really fun for me to have Joey here because a couple years ago when he was hosting the Maxwell Institute podcast, he interviewed me <laughs> for that one. Yeah, and much more fun to uh, be the host than to have to answer <laughs> questions. So I'm glad the tables have turned here. Okay, well, you're in the hot seat today. So yeah. today we're looking at um, Ether chapters 6 through 11. And uh, the artwork is by James Fulmer. It's called Shul on the Hill of Ephraim. This is from 2011. And Fulmer is actually an institute director and a seminary coordinator in Wisconsin. And he made this piece as part of a whole series of artworks that he included in his book, Other Heroes of the Book of Mormon. And his idea here was to try to fill in the gaps of some of the figures that we don't see visualized as much in Book of Mormon art. And so I really appreciate his, his careful reading of scripture and his thoughtfulness in um, giving us some, some visual tools to engage with the scriptures um, and with all of the characters in the scriptures. Um, now, Shul is not a character that probably a lot of us are super familiar with. I have to say I wasn't. So yeah. can you start by just telling us a little bit about Shul and what's happening in these Ether chapters? Sure. Mm -hmm. So Shul, this is someone I had to brush up on as mm -hmm. well, is a leader in Ether chapter 7. So you can see him here with a sword. He's known as a mighty warrior, but also mm -hmm. as someone who is just and is uh, who exercises righteousness. Mm -hmm. says twice in uh, either <laughs> chapter seven and chapter eight. One of the things that I appreciate about Shul is that in addition to being a warrior, being a king, is that he seems to be a devoted disciple of Jesus Christ, that he uses his power and influence to do what is right, even as it is difficult. In either chapter seven, his brother named Korahor, spelled with a C, takes the kingdom from his father in an act of rebellion. And ultimately Shul restores the kingdom to his father. Mm. But what I love is that in chapter eight, Shul engages with Korahor and helps him in his repentance process and eventually helps him to land a place in the kingdom so that he has power and authority, but also a place. He doesn't forget um, the value of an individual soul, even as it is someone who has caused a lot of heartache and problems for him yeah. and for his kingdom. Yeah, that's that's really interesting too. So. Um, I noticed looking through the Book of Mormon art catalog, there were only 10 images of Shul. Three of them are by this artist, James Fulmer, and then the other seven come from a cartoonist from the 1940s named John Philip Dalby. So they're the only two artists that have even tackled <laughs> right, these stories in art. Um, how does this piece compare to other depictions of Shul, and, and what do you make of the artist's choice to depict Shul as, um, as black here? How does that work or not work for you as a Latter-day Saint viewer and also as, as a scholar of African-American history? Yeah, so I'll say first that um, I don't represent black communities and also <laughs> that even within black communities, there's going to be a lot of different ways right. of thinking about sure. race and representation. Mm -hmm. But I personally like the way that, um, that Shul is portrayed here. So he has large muscles, but not in sort of a Freebergian way. He's yeah. still like human to uh -huh. some degree. He's built like a middle linebacker instead of like a Greek god, right, right? right? I also love that he's connected to sort of European motifs of looking out over vistas and yeah. having wonderment or um, otherwise looking out into the horizon for what's ahead yeah. rather than only focusing on what's in the front. Mm. Insofar as racial representation goes, um, this is something that anyone who follows conversations about the Book of Mormon today, or really even going back to the 1830s, will think about how race is portrayed there. Sure. And um, there are several great articles and ways that folks have tried to think about the Book of Mormon and saying that, oh no, racial curses don't exist in the Book of Mormon, just curses of righteousness or mm -hmm. unrighteousness. And so as a historian and someone who takes text seriously, I can 100% understand those readings. 
The issue is that that's not how many members of the church, mm -hmm. the vast majority of white members of the church especially, understood those verses. Hmm. And so portraying Shul as black, again, as a minor character, but as someone who maybe has more freedom to think about the way that they're portrayed because the, he's not a member of the Stripping Warriors, he's not Nephi, mm -hmm. uh, he's not Alma. As a lesser known character, this maybe becomes an introductory way for individual Latter-day Saints to think about how race is portrayed mm -hmm. in their lives and what they expect Book of Mormon characters to look like. Mm -hmm. uh, in one of my classes that I taught when I was an adjunct in religious education here at BYU, I used images from the church's global art competition portraying the first vision. Okay. And one of the ones that I loved actually came from Malaysia. It's painted in a very Southeastern Asian style and mm -hmm. the people look like Southeast Asians, or at least how the artist, who is a Southeast Asian, imagined them to be. Uh -huh. And so I would show students that painting alongside, say, what's in front of the Pearl of Great Price, the sort of very typical Joseph Smith looking up in the grove uh -huh. um, with very light or white skin features. Right. And just think, does it make a difference to you thinking mm -hmm. about the racial characterizations here? Mm -hmm. And for many of my white students, they didn't really care okay. that much, okay. but many students of color, mm -hmm. like it really means something to me mm. to be able to see myself in the story. Sure. And that's something as Latter-day Saints, um, not to speak for all of us, but <laughs> in my own opinion, that we need to do our best to follow President Nelson's uh, call to root out racism. And when I think of rooting out it means going beyond the surface of what everyone can see and mm. pulling out those sorts of expectations for what somebody might mm. look like mm. or think like or portray themselves as. Sure. And so art like this is particularly important to me because it gives African-American Latter-day Saints an opportunity to see themselves in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind if I share one more quick story, Please, I have yeah. a friend named Janan um, yeah. who is a convert to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And she mentioned in an academic paper that she gave about going into a Latter-day Saint temple for the first time and looking at the art and not seeing a single person of color there and how mm -hmm. devastating that was mm -hmm. for her. Mm -hmm. So again, as someone who goes into a temple and sees lots of people who look like me, right. it was a great reminder to me that as a disciple of Christ, I have a duty to make sure that not only I am comfortable and feel seen and valued, but that every single person right. Um, has the opportunity to see and feel themselves as part of the grand plan of salvation that our Heavenly Father has for us. Yeah, that's really powerful to hear that sp specific personal example. Um, thank you for sharing that. And I know the artist too, James Fulmer, has, um, he actually has a video on his YouTube channel um, kind of explaining his thought process in um, thinking about skin color or race in some of these images. And I think partly he says because these are the Jaredites and we don't quite know where they came from, right? That there's possibility there. It helps me to think about how the restoration today is comprised of people from all races, creeds, nations, ethnicities. Yeah. That there, if there's a multicultural restoration, it means that there have always been people who looked uh, or appeared or presented themselves differently than others did. Mm -hmm. And part of the beauty, um, as Elder Joseph Worthlin has talked about, that the Lord has created this great and beautiful symphony mm -hmm. of humankind. Oh. And he didn't create it just for the piccolos of the world to draw attention to themselves. <laughs> and so it's important for us all to recognize that every single person has a place mm -hmm. and a piece to play in the orchestra, mm -hmm. um, even if it's not something that's readily apparent as uh, someone is listening to the beautiful music that's produced. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Do you, just wrapping up, do you have any final thoughts or personal reaction to this artwork or scripture? So again, I really like this just because um, it is an idealized form, um, mm -hmm. especially an idealized masculine form. He has mm -hmm. huge muscles, he has broad shoulders, very handsome face, but he also seems like the type of person that you could see um, no, in your neighborhood. The only spiritual reflection that I would add to this, though, is just that um, in speaking to Latter-day Saints who don't see themselves portrayed in the mm -hmm. same ways or as frequently as others, mm -hmm. it's important that we not only have examples but continue to add examples, right. um, again, across 
race or class or ethnicity or ability mm -hmm. or other sort of uh, determining markers. While we're all covenant keeping people, we're all people who make the same covenants with God, mm -hmm. our lived experiences can be very different. Mm -hmm. And so I applaud any effort to respectfully yeah. uh, encourage others to see themselves in the restoration. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your thoughts on this. Of course. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> Thanks.